Here we need to find a function whose square plus the square of its derivative is equal to 1. Let's begin by letting our function equal y. And then what we're going to do is take the square of that function and add it to the square of its derivative. So the square of our function would be y squared plus and then we're going to add that to the square of the derivative. Notice it says derivative. Of course, if our function is y and we take the derivative with respect to x, well then our derivative would be annotated as dy dx. And don't forget to square that because it's not just the derivative, it's the square of the derivative. And then this is all going to equal one. So that's our differential equation. And now our job is to solve this differential equation using the method of separation of variables. And so what this means is we're going to try to gather all of the y's to one side and the x's to the other side of this equation. We could begin that process perhaps by subtracting y squared from both sides of this equation. This will cancel it out on the left side. Next, it's going to be helpful to take the square root of both sides. That way we can cancel out the square on the left side. So the square here and the square root will cancel. This gives us dy dx on the left side. And technically on the right side, we would have both plus or minus for that square root. For simplicity, we will choose the positive square root. So we will have the positive square root of one minus y squared. We are permitted to do that because the question just says to find a function that satisfies the given description. We don't have to find all functions that do so. So there is our current form of our differential equation. And as noted, we're trying to separate variables. So the next thing we might try to do here is multiply both sides of the equation by dx so we can cancel dx on the left side. And then to continue separating variables, we want to get the y's over there to the left side. So we'll divide by the term square root one minus y squared on both sides of the equation. So we can cancel that term out on the right side like that. And there we have it. We have separated the variables. We have all of the y's gathered to the left side and the x's to the right side. After separating variables successfully, your next step would be to integrate both sides. So we will integrate the left and the right sides. Now, the right side is easy. The integral of dx is just 1x plus an arbitrary constant of integration. The other side might look a little more complicated, but probably in Calculus 1 towards the end of that course, maybe the beginning of Calculus 2, you learned about that integral. And so that is a standard integral. It's one of the inverse trig integrals, and it turns out to equal the inverse sine of y. So hopefully you remember that from calculus. This is good, but typically we want to solve this for y. That will be our next step to get our final answer. So we have the inverse sine of y, and we want to get rid of that inverse sine function. So we do the inverse of the inverse sine. So in other words, we're going to take the sine of the left side as well as the sine of the right side. And that's a strategic choice because it will cancel out the inverse sine on the left side. This leaves us with our answer. We have y is equal to the sine of x plus that arbitrary constant. So this would be the correct answer. This is a function that when you square it and then add the square of the derivative, you would get 1. We could perhaps prove that, although it's not necessary. We'll do so real quickly here just as an exercise. Let's take the derivative of this now the derivative with respect to x dy dx, we remember the derivative of sine is cosine. So this would be the cosine of x plus c. Technically, you'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 1x is 1, and the derivative of that constant is 0. So this just ends up being multiplied by 1. So that would be our derivative. Now let's check the original differential equation. Remember, it was y squared plus dy dx, all of which is squared, is equal to 1. So we'll plug in. We know our function, our y, was sine of x plus c. That would be squared. Plus the derivative, which we just showed was cosine of x plus c. And that would be squared. And then that's supposed to equal 1. Why don't we actually move this down? Because we're going to run out of room. And this is actually just a standard trig identity. If we set this equal to 1, we would quickly see that this does indeed check. Because the sine squared plus the cosine squared of the same quantity is, in fact, equal to 1. So that kind of confirms our answer that this function in the box is the function that satisfies the original differential equation.